Tuesday evening and welcome to Alaska weather. Thanks for joining us. I'm meteorologist Amanda Bowen. Those numbers and websites at those at the bottom of the page are our best way to get a hold of us if you ever need to or to get a forecast outside of our show. That phone number 1-800-472-0391. You can call that 24 hours a day and get a recorded forecast for your area. And that website, weather.gov slash Alaska, is your best stop for a seven-day forecast or lots of other weather and climate information for your area. You can also personalize that website by going to weather.gov slash Fairbanks, Juneau, or Anchorage for more local information for your area if you know which area you live in. And if you ever have any comments or feedback for us, please feel free to email us anytime at nws.ar.tvweather at noaa.gov. We have one watch in effect for today, and in fact, this is going to be in effect through Wednesday morning. It's the same flood watch that we talked about yesterday for the area north of the Alaska Range between about Dot Lake and Tanacross. Over the last 24 hours, we saw quite a lot of rain in the Alaska Range, more than two inches, in fact, in the area between Delta and Tanacross. So although the heaviest of the rain is over for now, although some lighter rain continues, we're expecting that heavy rain that did fall yesterday and last night to drink, continue to drain out of the Alaska Range into some of those larger streams and rivers. So expect rises on larger streams and rivers draining the north side of the Alaska Range. Also possibly some washout issues with the Alaska Highway between Dot Lake and Tanacross. So if you're in those areas, make sure that even if it's not raining where you are, you are keeping an eye out for water rises on those larger streams and rivers and be prepared to act if needed if that water comes up Taking a look at the satellite image for today, we can see low pressure spinning in the Western Aleutians. That's gonna be bringing some clouds and rain to the Aleutians as well as the Alaska Peninsula today. We can also see some clouds associated with a secondary low pressure system in the Northern Gulf and our afternoon showers and maybe a few thunderstorms for the Southern part of the state. Over the panhandle, looks like clouds are starting to clear this afternoon, and we have some clear skies over the west coast of the state today. So taking a look at our surface chart, we can see there's a chance of thunderstorms over this afternoon and this evening over a significant portion of the interior, stretching all the way from the eastern Brooks Range down to almost the south central area and then west into the interior YK Delta. So keep an eye out for thunderstorms if you're in any of those areas today. We'll also expect some showers this afternoon for much of the rest of the southern interior as well as the panhandle possibly this afternoon. Fog developing for the north slope and the west coast as well as down through the Bering Sea today essentially. We'll see some rain with that fog along the Chukchi Sea coast as well as in the Aleutians. But we do have that high pressure in command just off the west coast near St. Lawrence Island. So that's what's going to be keeping that wind, light, and that fog in place for those west coast areas. For tonight, we are looking at fog across a lot of the interior with, again, that same high pressure system. So anywhere along the Yukon River, expect fog development tonight. Also Seward Peninsula and much of the Chukchi Sea coast as well as the North Slope. We could see some rain mixed in with that fog for portions of the North Slope as well. We'll see showers continuing associated with a weak trough over the eastern portion of the interior, stretching from about the south side of the eastern Brooks Range down through the Wrangell St. Elias Mountains, and even a slight chance for showers over the Panhandle tonight. 
Low pressure in the Gulf, although it's a weak low pressure system, will bring some rain into the Kodiak Island and Alaska Peninsula areas. And then our weakening low in the Aleutians will also bring some rain, but also allow for fog for the Eastern Aleutians and fog, but probably not so much rain for the Central and Western Aleutians tonight. For Wednesday, Again, some thunderstorms for Wednesday afternoon, although relegated mainly to the far eastern interior near the Canadian border, so a lot less coverage than we're expecting to see this afternoon and this evening. Some rain possible over the immediate north slope and showers for Wednesday afternoon from the Alaska Range south and west to the Alaska Peninsula. Rain then across the southern Alaska Peninsula and fog continuing across much of the Aleutians. We could see some sunny skies over portions of the west coast, including the YK Delta and up the Yukon River. So that fog should clear by Wednesday morning or Wednesday afternoon for those west coast areas. We still expect to see showers for the Panhandle as weak low pressure system continues to slip east towards that area. For Thursday, we're looking at continuing showers for the south southeastern interior as well as the northern panhandle, but rain is going to be moving into the Alaska Peninsula and south central areas as well as portions of the north slope just north of the eastern Brooks Range. But for most of the western half of the state as well as much of the Aleutians, we expect dry conditions on Thursday with some sun breaks or even sunny skies. So a bit of a break, especially for the Aleutians, a, a rare dry day this time of year with that high pressure centered just off the west coast, again, still around St. Lawrence Island. Taking a look at temperatures for Wednesday morning, not a whole lot of change from what we probably saw this morning. Maybe a little bit cooler along the north slope for Wednesday morning with temperatures getting down into the upper 30s to around 40 degrees for Wednesday morning. Across the interior, mainly mid 40s to upper 40s. A couple of temperatures around 50 degrees, for example, 50 around the Fairbanks area. Also 50 down in South Central around Anchorage mid 40s to upper 40s generally for the YK Delta area and then temperatures right around 50 degrees for the Panhandle and mid to upper 40s for the Aleutians on Wednesday morning. For Wednesday afternoon pretty mild temperatures warmest across the interior as usual mid 60s to some upper 60s for the Yukon River area across the interior also mid to upper 60s for that Matsu Valley area. Those are gonna be our warmest temperatures, peaking 67, 68 degrees. For the North Slope on Wednesday afternoon, expect temperatures approaching 50 to even the low 50s, as well as same story for the Seward Peninsula area, 54 degrees at Nome, 50 for Savunga on Wednesday afternoon, and then upper 50s, I'm sorry, upper 40s to low 50s for the Aleutians on Wednesday afternoon. For Thursday morning, expect temperatures fairly similar to what we're expecting for Wednesday morning. So temperatures upper 40s to around 50 degrees for much of the panhandle, as well as for south central. Temperatures across the interior, upper, upper 40s, maybe some mid 40s, a little bit warmer than Wednesday morning for the north slope expected on Thursday morning. So temperatures dipping down to about 40 degrees, but some low or even mid 40s uh, for Thursday morning. Maybe places where we'll see that cloud and rain is where we'll see those warmest temperatures for Thursday morning along the north slope. For the west coast, temperatures in the mid 40s and upper 40s to low 50s for the YK Delta, mid 40s for the Aleutians on Thursday morning. And finally, for Thursday afternoon, we do see a warming trend heading into Thursday afternoon. So we'll see possibly some 70s, around 70 or low 70s from the central interior down through the Matsu Valley. Looks like 68 at Anchorage, 63 at Seward, 61 down in Kodiak and looks like mid 60s to upper 60s for much of the YK Delta, so a definite warming trend there. For the North Slope, looking at temperatures in the 
upper 40s to even some mid 50s for Thursday afternoon, so also a little bit warmer there. And then for the panhandle, upper 50s to low 60s, so a couple of degrees warmer maybe than Wednesday, um, but still fairly mild conditions. And finally, for the Aleutians, temperatures in the upper 40s to mid 50s. Thanks so much for watching Alaska TV Weather. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Let's take a look at the aviation weather for Wednesday. We're looking at IFR conditions from the panhandle all the way across the North Gulf to the Eastern Kenai Peninsula. Also IFR conditions along the Chukchi Sea coast and the immediate west coast of the state out to about St. Lawrence Island. And as expected, IFR conditions through much of the Southern Bering Sea, including most of the Aleutians. For Wednesday afternoon, we see some improvement, particularly from about south central down through the panhandle, mostly MVFR conditions there for Wednesday afternoon, although we do still see some patches of IFR conditions around Yakutat, as well as in the higher terrain of the panhandle and the Wrangell St. Elias Mountains. Improvement along the Chukchi Sea coast to MVFR or even VFR, still some IFR sticking around for the western tip of the Seward Peninsula and portions of the Bering Sea as well as the Aleutians. For Thursday morning, generally VFR conditions from the Panhandle all the way through the mainland, a few spots of MVFR conditions around Yakutat as well as in Cook Inlet and the northern gulf itself. Also some MVFR conditions of the Yukon Delta and in Norton Sound. IFR conditions continuing across St. Lawrence Island, as well as the Chukchi Sea itself, and again, the Southern Bering and the Aleutians. For Thursday afternoon, we actually see deteriorating conditions from the southeast portion of the interior down through the Panhandle with mostly MVFR conditions there. Still VFR over most of the mainland though, with some MVFR conditions in the Eastern Bering into Norton Sound, as well as the Southern Bering and the Aleutians. Deteriorating conditions to MVFR in the Southern Alaska Peninsula with some IFR still hanging around for the Aleutians. For pass conditions on Wednesday, Anaktubik Pass and Adigan Pass both expected to be VFR on Wednesday. Lake Clark and Merrill Passes both expected to be MVFR on Wednesday, with some afternoon thunderstorms possible, particularly on the east side of both of those passes. Wednesday at Rainy Pass is looking like VFR and Windy Pass MVFR on Wednesday. Isabel Pass also MVFR, as well as Mentasta Pass expected to be MVFR on Wednesday. Some thunderstorms possible in the afternoon on the south side of Mentasta Pass though. For Tanita Pass, IFR conditions expected Wednesday morning with some improvement to MVFR on Wednesday afternoon. Some thunderstorms though, again, possible around Tanita Pass in the afternoon hours on Wednesday. Portage Pass IFR in the morning with, again, some improvement to MVFR in the afternoon, but do expect some chance of thunderstorms on the south side of Portage Pass over Kenai Peninsula on Wednesday afternoon. And Chilkoot and White Passes both expected to be MVFR through the day on Wednesday. Taking a look at freezing levels, we have one area of warm air coming up from the south into the southern gulf with freezing levels as high as 14,000 feet in the southern gulf, and one area of cooler air and lower freezing levels associated with low pressure in the Aleutians, so freezing levels there as low as 6,000 feet for the Aleutians. Icing on Wednesday. Over the Aleutians, above about 10,000 feet, we'll see some isolated moderate icing. Also isolated moderate above 10,000 feet for South Central and the Western Alaska Range, and above 8,000 feet along portions of the North Slope. For the jet stream, we have our low pressure in the Aleutians, and that's our main player. We have our main jet in the Gulf with high pressure off to the south of the map. So that main jet is gonna be 90 to about 110 knots out of the southwest and south on the south side of the Alaska Peninsula in the Gulf of Alaska. We also have about 75 knots out of the north on the west side of that low in the Aleutians. And high pressure over Western Canada with 50 to 60 knots near the Canadian border out of the south. For 9,000 foot winds, still our strongest winds in the Southern Gulf as well as in the Bering Sea. Southern Gulf 45 to 60 knots out of the west and about 45 knots out of the east for the Southern Bering Sea, north of that low pressure in the, the Aleutians. 
at 3,000 feet, not a whole lot of wind to talk about. We've got about 30 to 40 knots on the south side of the map. That's in the southern gulf as well as south of the Aleutians. But elsewhere, pretty much 5 to 10 knots, a couple of peaks of 20 knots, um, but just not a whole lot of wind at 3,000 feet expected for Wednesday. And turbulence on Wednesday, one spot right near the Chukchi Sea coast, below 3,000 feet of considerable moderate turbulence. Stay tuned for more Alaska weather after this. It's kind of hard to explain how important weather is to our job. I mean, it really affects everything we do. In 2018, NOAA launches the GOES-S satellite, which takes its place in orbit as GOES-17. Working together with GOES-16, the two new geostationary weather satellites will provide constant watch over the United States and the Western Hemisphere, from the west coast of Africa all the way to New Zealand, helping monitor severe storms, wildfires, and daily weather patterns. Since its launch, NOAA's GOES-16 satellite has already demonstrated its critical capability for keeping our nation weather ready. Throughout the active 2017 hurricane season, GOES-16 delivered imagery with detail and clarity never achieved before, with four times greater resolution than previous NOAA satellites, and delivered this imagery faster than ever before, helping forecasters predict the path of a storm and where and when it will intensify. These accurate and timely forecasts allowed for emergency managers to prepare for evacuations, map flood areas, and save lives. So the weather matters. Uh, the weather matters before the weather happens and the weather matters after uh, the event happens because what we're able to do to prepare, uh, allocate resources, uh, provide information to the public through the media uh, beforehand, and what we're able to do afterwards, how uh, and when the waters are going to recede so we know we can get vehicles with life-saving food and shelter equipment uh, down a particular highway, all of that depends on the forecast. In the GOES West position, GOES-17 will be able to provide critical data for the westernmost United States, Alaska, and Hawaii. We're talking about getting data updates in just seconds so we can quickly spot wildfires and closely monitor the wind direction and their intensity. The crispness of the data coming in at a faster rate will also help with fog forecasts. We can see the moment the strata starts to develop or when it starts to move out. Like GOES-16, GO-17 carries a suite of advanced instruments, including tools for sophisticated earth sensing, lightning detecting, solar imaging, and space weather monitoring. As an equal partner in the sky, GO-17 will expand coverage of the advanced baseline imager technology across the Pacific Ocean, allowing meteorologists and local officials to see severe weather systems developing in real time. So instead of seeing something, say, this large, that as you zoom in, actually gets kind of blurry, you're actually gonna see something that is much more detailed. In its GOES West position, GOES 17 will be able to monitor conditions in the western U.S. like wildfires, coastal fog, and atmospheric rivers when storms from the Pacific dump heavy rain and snow over the western U.S. GOES 17 will have a major impact on fighting wildfires in California. Up-to-the-minute information in crisp detail allows forecasters to spot fires faster than ever before, even before the first 911 calls come in, and to better track and predict the path of large, dynamic, and dangerous fires. It's amazing to see what we can get uh, and at the level of detail and the speed uh, that we can get the information down into the ground that makes our decision-making uh, way more accurate. With a view of the Pacific Ocean, GOES-17 will also provide a critical eye over shipping lanes vital to the U.S. economy, protecting cargo and passenger vessels from dangerous ocean storms. GOES-17 will also provide a high-definition view over Alaska, resulting in better weather forecasts and improved monitoring of sea ice, wildfires, and volcanic ash. The advanced baseline imager on GOES-17 can distinguish between clouds, sea ice, and snow cover, a critical need during Alaska's dark, cloudy winter months. GOES-17's geostationary lightning mapper monitors lightning flashes, including the in-cloud lightning most prevalent in severe storms, helping forecasters determine when a storm is forming, intensifying, and becoming more dangerous. Thanks to GOES-17, 
emergency managers will be equipped with more accurate weather predictions and faster warnings, providing a real impact, saving lives, and protecting infrastructure. Watching over Earth from 22,300 miles above, GOES-S will provide vital data to our weather-ready nation. Hi, I'm JPSS. I'm a high-tech weather satellite that orbits our planet. I do something called a polar orbit. I circle the Earth from North Pole to South Pole, over and over, while the Earth spins. While I do that, I get lots of information about what's going on around the globe. I watch storms, clouds, and rain. I take the temperature of the ocean, measure air quality, ozone health, and take pictures of the land and sea. This information is used for all kinds of things. It helps us take care of our coasts and oceans and all the amazing things that live there. It helps us monitor harmful weather events like floods and droughts and measure the health of the environment. Most importantly, it helps us predict weather three to seven days in the future. That means I can be a big help ahead of storms where future warnings are important. I send information to the National Weather Service. They use the information to create forecasts. The forecasts are shared with people all over the country to help prepare for weather emergencies. So you look to the sky and wave. I'll be flying by. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the marine forecast. Starting out with the sea ice edge, we can still see that ice-free area right along the coast connecting the Chukchi Sea to the Beaufort Sea. Still a couple of ice chunks just along the north slope, but in general, that ice edge is going to continue to melt back a little bit further north over the coming days through the rest of the week as we have some light southerly flow that's going to be bringing warmer air into the area. Looking at southeast winds and seas on Wednesday, pretty light in the wind area, 5 to 10 knots over the gulf out of the west and 10 to 15 knots over the inside waterways. Seas pretty low as well, just four to five feet over the gulf and about two to three feet over the inside waters. Winds pick up a little bit over the southern gulf on Thursday, 15 to 20 knots out of the east, whereas further north in the gulf, we'll continue to see about 10 knots out of the west. Seas are gonna come up a little bit with those winds in the southern gulf as well to about six to seven feet. Still about two to four feet for the inside waters on Thursday. For South Central on Wednesday, also light winds here, five to 10 knots, generally out of the south and southwest. As we head into Thursday, 10 knots across the board out of the west, sea is pretty consistent, four to five feet over the Gulf waters, about two feet over both Cook Inlet and Prince William Sound. Taking a look at the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island areas on Wednesday, also fairly light winds for the area here, 10 to 15 knots out of the southwest, seas about five feet over the Gulf and just one to two feet on the north side of the Alaska Peninsula. Heading into Thursday, we see those winds come up a little bit, 10 to about 20 knots and shifting to out of the northeast and east in general. On the Gulf side, we'll see seas come up just ever so slightly to about five to six feet and up to about two to three feet on the north side of the peninsula. For the Aleutian chain on Wednesday, 15 to 20 knot winds generally out of the south, although for the western Aleutians, we'll see some northerly and northwesterly flow. Seas six to eight feet on the south side of the chain and about three to four feet on the north side of the chain with five to seven foot seas in the western Aleutians. For Thursday, those winds generally coming down to about 10 knots 
Highest winds in the western Aleutians, 20 knots out of the east. But in general, we'll see 10 to maybe 15 knot winds. And seas coming down as well, 4 to 5 feet on the south side of the chain and just 2 to 3 feet on the north side of the chain for Thursday. For the west coast on Wednesday, 10 to 20 knot winds with those strongest winds just east of the Perblov is going to be 20 knots out of the east. 4 to 5 foot seas over the open Bering Sea and about 2 to 3 foot seas closer to the land, including in Norton Sound, 2 feet on Wednesday. For Thursday, winds pretty consistent, 10 to 15 knots, even down by the Pribilovs winds coming down to about 15 knots out of the northeast. Wind directions a little bit more squirrely. We'll see some more westerly and southwesterly flow as we head further north into Norton Sound and around St. Lawrence Island, but more northerly flow as we head south into the rest of Bering Sea. For Wednesday along the Arctic coast, 10 to 15 knot winds out of the west for much of the north slope, although for the eastern portions of the north slope, we'll have a southeasterly component to those winds at about 10 knots, two to three feet seas along the north slope. For the northwest coast, we'll see 10 to 20 knot winds generally out of the south and about three to four foot seas. For Thursday, winds coming up a bit in the Chukchi Sea out of the southwest at about 20 knots. Uh, elsewhere along the north slope, still 10 to 15 knots out of the south and southeast, and seas from 2 to 3 feet along the north slope, and 5 to 7 feet for the Chukchi Sea on Thursday. Recapping what we're expecting for tonight, showers continuing over the eastern interior down through the Panhandle, as well as some rain for the eastern Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula. Over the north slope, we'll see fog development with some rain possible for the north slope mixed in with that fog. High pressure in command over the west coast, meaning plenty of fog development for the west coast. And it looks like all the way up the Yukon River fog development possible tonight. Into Wednesday, thunderstorms again for the eastern interior. Thanks so much for watching Alaska TV weather. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.